Yeah, it's a, it's a great pleasure to be part of this conference. My name is Vasily Peribenos. I'm from University at Buffalo. And um, today I will chair the session uh, in the morning uh, by the talk by Chang Li. And um, he uh, graduated from University of Science and Technology of China in 1986. And then he moved to US and um, defended his PhD at Iowa State University in 1991. And since then, he worked at Brookhaven National Lab. His main interest in cardinal um, materials and superconducting materials. And uh, recently in 2020, he joined the um, faculty at Stony Brook University. And he still maintains his um, part-time position at Brookhaven National Lab as a group leader at Advanced Energy Materials Group. And so it's a great pleasure to welcome Chang Li. The, the floor is yours. And uh, when you ask the questions, you can either raise your hand or type your questions in the chat. Okay. So um, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. All right. Okay, share the screen. All right, great. So can you can you see it now? Yes. Very yeah, good. Just try full screen. Okay, great. Perfect. Well, well thank you. Thank you uh, for the introduction and also for the organizers for this wonderful uh, conference. Uh, I, I enjoyed it a lot. So uh, today uh, I'm going to give a lecture on a, uh, a quantum materials and for quantum information science. And um, there are a lot of material to cover. However, I will uh, put emphasis on the quantum computing with the Carl fermions. Um, that's the area we have been working for uh, quite some time. So um, let me start with uh, with this uh, a cartoon. You probably see that in a different versions, right? So um, here is the um, Alice and uh, and Bob. They're communicating in a quantum space. Now to ena uh, enable this happening is the quantum hardware, right? You need a quantum quantum hardware. For instance, you need a quantum computers. You need a quantum networks and the quantum transducers. Now, you probably know quite a lot about the quantum computers and the quantum networks. Now, quantum transducer does is that an ideal case is that to uh, pass in this uh, quantum information it seems like, like and uh, in a space, and, uh, and you have to work with the uh, uh, different modalities. For instance, if computers operate at gigahertz and the networks operate at the uh, optical frequencies, so you have to have the frequency conversion of that one without loss of information. Of that. So uh, at the heart of this uh, whole quantum hardware is the quantum materials. And that's what makes it all happen, right? So um, let's uh, look at the, uh, the quantum material. There are so many varieties, the conventional ones, there are also emergent ones too. So I will not be able to cover all of them. So let me take a uh, narrow down a little bit to uh, five uh, quantum computing uh, related platforms. And this is really a nice articles uh, um, recently published in the Nature um, Science Magazine by uh, Natalie and her coworkers. Um, Natalie gave a talk yesterday, a lecture yesterday on the uh, quantum communication there. Now this uh, um, uh, article is very nice because it highlights some of the challenges and opportunities for the different uh, platforms here. You have the superconnect circuits, you have the quantum dots, you have color sanders, trapped ions, and topological protect protective systems there. Now, all of that, uh, all the superconducting circuits are made into the market, right? You can buy a quantum computers made of a superconducting qubit. Now, the rest of them are in a di uh, different developing stage, right? Some of them are more advanced, some of them are, are, are um, uh, even to the, to, the, to, the, to the point that you can actually testing the um, uh, quantum algorithms in the system, for instance, use these uh, trapped ion processes. My focus today, uh, the lecture is really on the topological protective systems there. And then let's go into some details. So um, first, let me start with this quantum computers. Now, here is the photos of a, on the left-hand side is the executive uh, CEO of Alphabet and standing next to a dilution refrigerator. This dilution is a cooled superconducting circuit to a low temperature, about tens of millikelvin. Now, um, in the 2019, the group of scientists and engineers from Google declared the quantum supremacy, right? We all 
hear this news there. It's very exciting. Now at heart of this uh, quantum processors is a superconducting qubit. On the right hand side, I show you the image of that is from IBM. Now uh, you drill down to uh, magnify it. The heart of this superconducting qubit is a Joseph junction. Now, the Joseph junction, simply put, it, is really nothing but a two pieces of superconductors joined by a weak link. This weak link, for instance, a thin layer of insulators serving as a tunneling barriers between the superconductors. Now, on the, on the lower um, right-hand corner is a real image of a aluminum aluminum oxide Joseph junction in the superconducting uh, 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 qubit that's um, um, manufactured by the IBMs. Now, you look at all these things, and really, of course, we, we, we have a very nice advancement in this field there. But however, you look at this uh, qubit there, you'll find that, uh, wait a minute, this superconductor qubit have energy gap in the gigahertz. Why is that? Because that was made to fit the electronics that was back in 20 years ago. And also, there's other consideration of that, because the superconductors used in this junction over there is low temperature superconductors have a transition temperature we call TC about a few degrees. Now, remember one degree, one Kelvin implies energy fluctuations is 20 gigahertz. Now you see that, right? So um, you need a dilution refrigerator to cool the systems to about uh, 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 tens of minute Kelvin to make the cubic work at about five gigahertz because the TC's ultimate sets the upper limit of a superconductor qubit can operate. In this case, is one terahertz. So now the state of art is really the superconducting qubits operate about five gigahertz, and that has been stayed there for about 20 years. So then you have the question is that how are we going to see the next generation of a super, uh, a qubits or quantum communication system? Now, actually, now the reality is that. Right now, we don't even have a qubits for larger scaling to over, over 100 of them to error correct the quantum computers. Or we actually don't have a physical platforms for linking the quantum computers over long distance or linking a quantum computers to quantum network. So I think this is a, a, a really interesting to look at that. The system we have there is very interesting, but still we're in the earlier stage of the quantum uh, 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 revolution. So what we want is a better qubit and better transductions in order to enable us to get to the next step. So uh, in, in this case, what we're looking for is a quantum leap, right? To the next generation of a qubit. Now there, I, I tell you, there are different varieties and people work in the different directions here. And in this lectures, we're focused two of them, the superconductor qubits and the topologic uh, protect the system over there. Now the topology protect system over there and deal with the topology of the wave function. So you probably hear, some of you hear about the Majorana qubits. I bet most of the people don't hear about the Caro qubits because that's something proposed by Professor Harzev and myself. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today. So um, now, what is the distinction of these two types with the rest of these, say the Carter centers, the quantum dots, or trapped ions here? Now, quantum uh, superconductor qubits, uh, Majorana qubits, and Caro qubits all deal with uh, material, quantum materials, have the macroscopic quantum coherence. This macroscopic quantum behavior is very different from the rest of the people, uh, rest of the uh, 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 qubits that we're talking about here, because this macroscopic quantum coherence involves millions or even billions of the electrons, not a single spin or single atoms. So that makes the things very exciting. And also, this attracted the condensed matter physicists, and including now, including all over the world, the scientists in this uh, quantum phenomenon for decades. And there are more than five or 10 Nobel Prizes awarded related to the quantum phenomenon of this superconductivity and topological system. So I think the fundamental science in this field holds the keys to next generation of qubits, even for many generations to come. So understanding fundamental science of these materials is very important. So I'm gonna to go to some more details of that. Well, things. let's look at superconductor qubit, right? We currently state of the use low temperature superconductors. Now, the natural question is that can we use a better superconductor with a better interface, right? 
So I'm going to just, I want to show you an example of this. Now here is a TA image in the middle of that is TA image. It's high resolution one. You actually, each dot is showing a column of atoms. Now here in the middle of that, pointed by these arrows is interface. This is a atomically sharp interface of the CX twisted Joseph junctions made out of the bismuth, strontium, calcium, copper oxide. We call it bismuth two to one to bicrystals in our group. So that was 20 years ago. Now look at that. This is atomic sharp interface. Now compared to the Morpheus interface you used for the current a cubic there. This is all the magnitude better because this crystallography is coherent. And also this crystals has a TC of 91 Kelvin. That is all the magnitude better than those low TC superconductors. Recently more advanced in this field that our collaborators in Fulan University able to make a model layer, take just a single layer of a superconductor out of that and, and found that the transition temperature is the same as the bulk. Now you can think about it. Now, if we can make a high temperature superconducting Joseph junction out of the monolayer of bismuth 212, that probably is, it will work better. So um, that might be some direction to look for that. So it's a very exciting to see you have a, a different path forward, even in a, a, a superconductor cubic area. Okay. Now, next we talk about this uh, topological protective system. This is about uh, Magellanic qubits. Now, the, this Magellanic cubic is really built on the theory of that the trajectories of this Magellanic quasi particles can be arranged to be topologically distinct. How you can swap it, right? You have two distinct states, and that forms the basis for the uh, uh, Magellanic cubic. Now, the people are looking for this Magellanic fermions all over the place. A very exciting field there, and there's some uh, 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 exciting news, and also a misfire too in some places. So what are we looking for that? Now we know superconductor better, right? We know the quasi-particle excitation in superconductor has this particle hole symmetry. Now excitation in the superconductor should become in pairs for the quasi-particles at energies plus or minus. Now overall, if the energy uh, zero, if this is referred to the zero energy excitations. It's a quasi-particle state at a zero energy. This is called Magellanic zero mode. People were trying looking for that. Now, one way to look for that is to have a, a semiconductor nanowires. I draw it here. These nanowires made up those uh, very uh, materials have a strong spin up the couple. And now you put a superconductor layers uh, next to it, we call it proximities. Now, this measure on zero mode in series have to show up at the end of this nanowires as shown here on the two ends, left and right. So people were looking for that. It's a very exciting field, and there are a lot of reports there, and also some retractions too. So um, the next one is that you could finally possibly find this measured on a zero mode in ion-based superconductors. Now, if you think about that, if you have vortices in the superconductor, what is the water? It's a normal material, right? It's a normal state embedded in the superconductor. At the end of the vortices, you probably see the measure on a bond state too, right? So evidence of that is called a uh, zero conductance peak and people have seen some of that too. So um, now I'm not going to do detail about that. There are a lot of debate on this, uh, uh, how to interpret the data of that. But at Brookhaven, uh, we involved there too. So our groups actually made a lot of crystals and this crystal is made by Gandas at Brookhaven actually goes all to this uh, high profile papers here. You can see a lot of them. So they use the same crystal from Ganda, right? And our groups are also the first ones to grow these ion charcoal films. We'll be able to make this um, epitaxial films in uh, using pulse laser depositions showed on the right hand side there. And, um, and this is enabled to study some of the uh, topological properties of, the, uh, of this uh, um, uh, assisting over there. So this is an exciting field of that. And, 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 and it's, it's, it's going forward. And if you go back to look at this uh, paper published in Nature uh, Science Magazine there, you will uh, find that there's more discussion on this uh, um, um, Magellanic cubic up there. So now let's go back to the, the main topic of my today's talk, which is the Kara cubic. Now, now, I want to first put this caveat at, the, uh, at, at front. Now, this is a proposal, an idea put, uh, developed by uh, Karzev and myself, there, right? We don't have this physical cubic around there. No, there is nothing there. So this is a proposal there. But both of us are very passionate about that. 
because the fundamental science is driving these proposals is not only fascinating, I think it's very solid. So today I'm gonna to talk more about this one there. So uh, first the thing is that uh, we're talking about the Caro cube. So what is a Caro, right? The Caro, Carolity is a Greek word, and it's talking about the property of the handedness. And Lord Kelvin has put it in a more scientific way to say that if you have a figure, a geometric figure of group of points, you call it a caro, it means that it's a mirror image and a prime mirror image cannot overlap with itself. Now your hand is caro, right? You do any translation or rotations, you can't overlap it to do it, right? And the seashell is caro, the biology is caro too, because the lives on earth is made of this amino acid. They all have left-handed carotids. Even the DNA, everything, and this is almost exclusive. And the DNAs in the organisms on earth, they all made of double helix, it's right-handed. So uh, the carority we're gonna talk about today is different from this uh, biological carotids. We're talking about this carot carotid or carofermions really comes up from the uh, um, Ritavis quantum field theory. And they deal with this uh, particles traveling at a speed close to speed of light. Once you have that kind of particles in there, the spin of that particles have two choices, either parallel to the momentum or opposite to momentum. So parallel, we call right-handed particles and opposite, we call left-handed particles. Yeah. Now, more, scientific, uh, more uh, 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 precisely that the state can be in this two chiral state or superposition of that. And that form the basis for building chiral cubic. You can have a lot of chiral particles generate in a quark long plasma in a heavy ion collisions at the Brooklyn National Labs, a, a RIC or LHC in a CERN. Now in condensed matters, we don't have this particle travel at the speed of light, right? In a solid there, the electron there doesn't really travel that, that fast. So what we have, we have is a quasi particle. Now, we describe the quasi particles traditionally for years within the uh, Landau's liquid, uh, Fermi liquid theory, use the shorting equations because they describe the property of this uh, uh, quasi particle quite well. And we use a Hamiltonian, right, show here, which equals to the momentum squared divided by two effective mass, right? And this you can see the energy and momentum relations parabolic, as shown here. We, this is kind of shorting of fermions. Now, if you look at the uh, heavy, uh, heavy ion uh, collision over there, those particles generated have becomes ultra-relativistic particles and they have a different dispersions. Now, this energy momentum relation, we call it dispersion. Okay. And this is described by direct Hamiltonians here, as shown here. Now, the energy is equals to C is the speed of light times the polyspin, the product polyspin matrix times the momentum. Now, if you look at energy and momentum relation, it becomes linear. Right? It's a straight line here. As a linear dispersion, we call linear dispersion. Now, of course, in condensed matter, I don't have a particle travel speed of light. I have a particle travel speed of Fermi velocities, at least in the metals. So in that case of that, but if you have a dispersion, it goes linear like this, we can actually borrow it. We can actually use direct equations to describe our systems. Now, all you have to do is that replace the speed of light with the Fermi velocity you end up the Hamiltonian written like, like, like this way. H equals the Fermi velocity. In this case, it's the pseudo matrix and times the momentum. Now, this is what I said. Do we have this kind of dispersion of particles? And we do. We actually know that. First, we know that we actually have the graphene. In the graphene at the nodal directions, you have the linear dispersions. And in the 3D cases, we have a semi-metals. Semi-metal means that the gap is zero. And in this case, the chiral semi-metal is that the dispersions have linear uh, behaviors. There are two versions, and those are discovered within the last 10 years. So there's two versions. One is the wire semi-metals on the left-handed. Now, in this case, the two chiral particles, the left hand and right hand, occupied a separate cone. Okay, I was showing the right hand on this orange cone and the left handed on the uh, are these blue cones here. This shows you that the two bands are not degenerate, they're separate. And in, in wire form, it's always coming in pairs, okay? So each wire point acts like singularity of the barrier curvature in the brilliant zone. And this is kind of like magnetic molecules in, a, in a case space, okay? They have a source and drain. They always have to come in pairs, right? We know that. 
So um, there are other versions called direct semi-metal. In the direct semi-metals, the right hand and left hand occupied on the same cone, okay, show here. So that means that they're double degenerate, okay? Each cone still have both of them, and they mixed up with it. You know, even though each of them has diff, uh, uh, definite priorities, but you have to, uh, uh, both of them occupy the same cone. Now, one thing we'll find out that we found out is that this direct cone can split into two wire, uh, this, uh, uh, wire cones, either by breaking the crystal inversion symmetry or time reversal symmetry. What are we talking about time? Time reversal, basically you apply an external magnetic field, you break the time reversal symmetry. So in the magnetic field, the direct semi-metals pretty much automatically transfer into the wire semi-metal. Then you have two versions separate, okay. Okay, this is nice there. Uh, we have this system over there. Then what you have is that, what's the consequence of that? The consequence is that in normal circumstances, there, the carotid is conserved. But if you have a carofermions coupled into the vector gauge potentials, that break car symmetry. And this could uh, result in the generation of electric current by the carotid imbalance between left-handed and right hand fermions in the external magnetic field. And this is the car magnet that. And this is proposed by uh, Professor Horzev in, in 2008 with collaborates. Now this is coming from the uh, um, quantum relativist quantum field theory. And we used to predict some of the things happens in the quark long plasmas uh, created by this uh, heavy ion collision of them. Now central idea is this one. Now you, if you have this imbalance up there and you were created current, and this current were proportional to mu phi, this is chirochemical potential, and B is the magnetic field parallel to the E. Okay. So um, now in, uh, historically, this a chiral magnetic depth, in fact, is actually is a manifestation of this chiral normally known in the late 1960s. And this, this is the time when people were studying the, 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 the pion physics and they found this neutral pions decays a lot faster than charged pions by order of 10 to the eighth. And this fast uh, 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 decay over there thought that this is anomaly there. And it is a, in 1983, Nelson and Inamias and put a, a found that similarities of this uh, um, fermion system of lattice gauge theories and the electron system of the crystals. What they started with is they call a semi-metal with zero gap, basically a, a semiconductor with zero gap, which is semi-metal, right? Have linear dispersion in our case is a direct wire semi-metals. And we found that there is analogies of this chiral normally in the solid state. Now, how are we gonna exp uh, understand that? Now, let's look at the right-handed, pic uh, left-handed picture of that. As I said, I have this linear dispersion, right? Apply strong magnet, what happened? The particles will go to Landau lab, as I showed here. But on the lower Landau is linear dispersed, right? Because I have this uh, direct wire semi-metals there. Now, in, if you start with a direct semi-metal, what happens is that you break the uh, time reversal symmetry and you will end up the right-handed occupying this cone, when this case is a branch, and this one just draws a branch there, left hand. So this move forward, because of spin and momentum in the same direction and spin momentum in the opposite directions, that means the particle move backwards this way. Now, if I apply electric field, what happened? In the same direction as the B direction and in, in a forward momentum. Now, in this case, we'll take a positive charge. This is what accelerate, this electric will accelerate the particles moving forward, right? But it was suppressed ones for the left-handed. And this will create a chirochemical potential. This potential will be higher and this will be lower. This chiral potential is exactly what we're, uh, Professor Carlsen were looking for in the uh, high ion collision over there. And this will produce a current. And this is actually pretty easy to compute, uh, 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 calculate. Now I will go this uh, very quickly to see how you get this uh, current out of that. So basically you have two processes, right? You have the car normally coming from E dot B. Then the other ones try to smoothing up. This is called a chiral uh, chain of scattering. This car scattering, we introduce a, a relaxation time or we also call it Carl flipping time, tau v. Now in a stated state, and you put this one to zero and you end up this mu phi, which is proportional to the E dot B times uh, a tau v. Now put this uh, a chirochemical potential back into this equation here, chiromagnetic current, you end up with is this uh, uh, conductivity. Now this chiromagnetic field, a chiromagnetic effect conductivity is proportional to B squared. That's the smoking gun. So, Experiment observables in condensed matter is a negative longitudinal magnetic resistance at the conditions that the parallel and, and uh, 
electromagnetic field. So this is what you're looking for. So uh, we are, uh, uh, this is actually was first observed in the zirconium penetrator in our group there. Now we talk about zirconium, why it's special about zirconium penetrator. Now zirconium penetrator turns out that it's a 3D direct semiconductor. Now, how do we know that? Now, I told you that you look at the dispersion, right? So the way to do that is to use the angle reserve a photo emission that we call the RPES and look at the dispersion. Now, in this case, you will see that there's linear dispersions at the zone centers along chain direction. And this is over very large energy areas. Then you call the chain direction, the KC direction, you find it's also linear dispersion. That means it's a 3D semi-metal, direct semi-metal, right? Have linear dispersion. All we have to do is to measure the resistance. So we put this crystal we show here using the full probe inline measurement. And the, uh, this is the real crystal we actually measure. We measure more tens of them. So this is one of the examples of that. And this is electron diffraction pattern it shows the, the crystallinity of the samples. It's, if this is a single crystal, of course, you, you have very good um, uh, crystallinity there. It's, it's demonstrated by this electron diffraction pattern. Now, if you apply the magnetic field perpendicular current, you see a large magneto resistance. And this is very normal. This is just driven by the Lorentz uh, force, right, uh, uh, effect. But if you rotate the magnetic field, when it's making it parallel to current, what happens? You see a negative magneto resistance. And this, in a classic sense, never happened. Why? Because you have electromagnetic parallel. This is called Lorentz force free configuration. Electrons should not be no effect of there. Now, this effect is really coming from carmagnet effect. And, and, and more interestingly, you can actually fit this resistance and found that it is indeed in a low field limit, it proportional to D squared. This quadratic magnetic field dependence is a smoking gun for this carmagnet effect. And we uh, uh, observed this one, it's the 2014, and, and, and we put paper together and before the Christmas up in the archive, and three months later, it was confirmed in many other systems. And this both in the direct systems and in the wire systems. So now I told you all about this uh, car magnet, and then you will say that what this got to do with the quantum communication, quantum computers. Now, this is what I'm going to tell you a little more about that. This is an important experiment. It's tell you that, not only to show you that this car fermions has a car RT, but I also tell you how to manipulate it. The idea is that. I'm going to do is that this is an experiment coming from an MIT group. And what they did is that they send in circular polarized light. Remember, you have cardi, okay? And this cardi is left-handed or right-handed. Now, I've sent in circular polarized light, which can be left-handed or right-handed, right? I'm shining on the crystals, and I will have a photo current. This is a galvanic effect, we know that. Now, if this, car, uh, this particle is not cardi, there should be no effect on the polarization of, the, uh, of this light on it. Now, if there is a chiral, that means there is angular momentum transfer, okay? It will be become chiral, right? What they found is this current, the photo current in the middle of the figures showing that this swings according to the polarization from right circular polarized, go to negative and go back again, back away. So this circular polarization depends and tell you that the fermions in this tendon arsenide has a carority, okay? And it's also important is that to tell you that this effect of coupling or the ang angular momentum transfer there because the conservation law there, it's, it's effective ways to manipulate these carotides and the coupled to the systems which you can use for quantum computing. Okay? And this is a very important experiment. Now from there, we'll see, this is what our proposal there. So we think that you can actually build this caro qubit using a, a microscale rings made of this Y or Dirac semimetals with the zero one, the base state, the quantum state corresponding to the symmetric and any symmetric superposition of this quantum state. Describe this quantum formulas. What we do here that just uh, a sketch here is that you have right-handed and left-handed circulating current carried by this car formulas and coupled to this circular polarization. And this build up the base state here, I showed here. Zero and a one from this two circulating current here. Now, a fractional magnetic flux through the rings will induce a quantum superposition. The entanglement of qubits can be implemented through the circular polarized terahertz of frequency electromagnetic fields. Let me explain a little more about that once. Now, first things. It turns out that if you work out the Hamiltonian of this car uh, qubit, 
it has the same thing as the superconducting qubit. This is the Hamiltonians we show here. Okay, so that means that the, all the quantum gates you developed for the superconducting qubit can be <laughs> borrowed and to work in our pretty much work in a, a, a Karo qubit because in the superconducting uh, uh, you have the flux. You have a flux change the uh, discrete uh, properties in a cubic. Here, this fractional uh, 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 magnetic field produced superposition to left and right hand uh, fermions. So, uh, how we talk about the. Uh, 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 now, now, here I'm going to give you an example of that one to, uh, to make a comparison. Now, superconductor cubic, you know better, right? So, basically, you uh, shuffle these Cooper pairs from one of the a box to the another through this Joseon tunnel, right? And this is done by using a, a microwave cavities, a power of that, and you can do that with the shuttle designs. Now, in the car curve, what happened? We rely on this car anomaly. This car may we call it pumping. This car anomaly pumps car charge from left-handed branch to right-handed. Now, you can do two ways. The one way is optical control, one way is electric control. The optical control is that you send in circular polarized. You utilize the conservation of angular momentums to change the, the, the chirality of the system. Or vice versa, you can use the chirality of the fermions to modulate the, the, the circular polarization, the light of it. So this is called optical control. The other ones is electric control. Electric control is similar to what I described to you, this uh, car magnetic effect. You provide a parallel electric magnetic field, which uh, gave the car source and induce this car anomaly over there, and it changes this car chemical potential. So I think the more effective way to do that is optic control, because this one, which I'm going to talk about, it can be used for doing the quantum transductions. Okay. So now let's just focus on the optical control of that. So you can do that. Now, how are we going to do about the entanglement of the car qubits? Now, this one, our proposal is that you can use near field terahertz electromagnetic uh, 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 emission over there. Now, in a superconductor cubic there, you use a microwave cavity, right? Here we propose is that you use terahertz resonators. There are different ways to do that. Now, 20 years ago, this terahertz uh, uh, circuits and uh, other things developed is really very, very uh, primitive. Now there's a lot of development in this field, right? You can actually make this uh, terahertz resonators use nanomaterial, uh, mechanical uh, uh, fork, or optical mechanical or split ring resonators now. Now, spring resonator now is known to produce this desired magnetic res response in various types of uh, metal materials at a frequency up to 200 terahertz now. Okay? This provides a strong magnetic coupling to the applied electromagnetic wave. We use that. The idea is that if you have this uh, a terahertz resonator there, for instance, this spring ring resonator there, they do three things. One thing is that they can use it as a way to store information as a storage. It's the same way as your micro cloud cavities. And also, you can use the coupling. You can couple the neighbors' uh, qubits of there, uh, these rings over there, by use radiation, because itself can be used as a measuring tool and also as an emission, produce emissions. So that were causing the entanglement of the qubits. So this is a schematic showing the, uh, the range of that one. So of course, this is a very cartoon uh, picture, symbolized one to, 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 to describe this entanglement. We don't have a real ones, right? The real ones would be much, much more complicated for that. That's the caveat I have to give there. This just illustrate the, 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 the principle where use is use this near field, a terahertz electromagnetic field. Now, okay, so next part of that, I want to talk about is that the theory of this chiral curve that actually can be applied to the topology into insulator, a quantum spin hole systems, two dimensions particularly. Now, what is topology insulators? Topological insulator is the materials. It's, it's a quantum material. It's to, we call it topological material. Is that normally you will have a mat uh, material which either is insulator or metal, but a topology insulator is that. In the bulk is an insulator, on the surface is metal. This is due to the strong spin up the coupling, which causes uh, the uh, introducing a uh, uh, producer this surface states, which is linearly dispersed inside the bulk gap. This surface states, in the 2D case, it forms edge state. This edge state produces a chiral current. In this case, the uh, spins and, and momentum is locked, 
perpendicular. Now, I have to uh, caution you that the chiral fermion you know, that we talk about in, in uh, Dirac wire segment metals is a parallel, but here is locked. But the phase is the same. You have the two channels going forward, and this is protected by time reversal symmetry. So the backward scattering is prohibited because of the symmetry protection here. The essential phase is the same in a 3D case. This is a 1D case where you have. So this, uh, uh, this two version of this uh, coupled uh, uh, edge state current can be factored used the same way as our rings. So it's our series over there and actually applies to this topologic insulator or the quantum spin hole system. Like that. Now, this is something uh, um, kind of a hopeful thinking, but I thought that there, there, there's, a, there's a, a, a science there is, is solid because we know that this uh, uh, very effective coupling of the chirality to the uh, um, circular polarized light. Now, this will enable us to make this quantum to quantum a full spectrum transductions relied on these chirarities. How so? Now, think about that. You have a Josephson system over there, up in the microwaves, right? And you have a superconductor gap, which covers a very large range, now, including the high temperature superconductor gap. You can go all the way to the uh, uh, terahertz range. Then you have IR or Raman mode up in this spectrum. Then you go all the way to fiber optic communication. This is optical, uh, visible light there. And even to the UV light over there. Now we know that this is an experiment that the coupling of the chirality, chiral fermions to the circular polarizing works in the terahertz and also works in infrared ranges. And evidence seems like suggests that it will work on microwave too. We're still working on that. So, and the photo emission shows this uh, 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 result too. So, practically, I can have this coupling that go all the way from one end to another. And this is going to be able to. I build this a full spectrum of transductions for end to end. And this is exciting because now you have a ways to couple the super uh, quantum computers up in the gigahertz to the optical network by using the current. So in the quantum communication, the current will serve as an encoder and decoder for trans message. In this case, as well, it's like a quantum bus, right? Between the different modalities. Of that. Well, this is all worked so far. It looks like uh, fascinating. Then, and the next one is that, of course, uh, we, we, uh, I'm going to tell you some, some example of that. We don't have a real qubit right now, right? But we'll work on that. But all, in our view is that the fundamental science over there is really important. So um, we know that the reality can be very cool. And you can, uh, uh, there are a lot of challenges, expect anything to expect down the road. So we have to start from somewhere, right? So in our, uh, in our mind, as a physicist, we think that the fundamental understanding of this topological materials, how we control these topological phase transitions is important. And those probably hold the case for the next generation of this uh, building this car cubics or many other things too. So our focus is right now is the fundamental science, try to understand some of the topological transitions and also find ways to create this uh, 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 car current, which will be able to manipulate the cubics. Of that. So in the next few slides, I'm going to tell you uh, 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 some of the, um, just a few slides, most recent work along this direction. This is a very uh, fundamental science of that. So, but I think they uh, provide the, uh, the steps now and will give us, uh, get us closer to the, what we want for the uh, um, uh, quantum information system. Now, now I'm gonna stick with the, uh, the quantum penetrator because we like it so much. And um, this is the quantum penetrator right? by itself is not a wire system, right? It can be in any states of wire, uh, 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 of a weak topology insulator, Dirac semi-metals or stone topology insulator, depends on the distortion of the materials. Now, this is a, a calculation from first principles from Brookhaven. And we, what we did there is that we changed the uh, uh, modulated elastic distortions. As you can see here on, on this animated figure over there, the band gap actually closes at some point and opens up. Now, if you vary the topological invariance, you find that on the left-hand side is the weak topological insulator, on the right-hand is, is a strong topological insulator. So this shows you that a small amount of lattice distortions can change the state, the topologic phase of this material. Now, of course, when you have a crystal, it's built, right? You can steadily strain it. But also, you can do dynamic. How we do that is that you can send in this drama-active phone using light to activate. 
Once you have, you can dynamically drive the systems in a different uh, 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 topological state. And this actually pretty much independent of, um, uh, uh, with our collaborators at the ENS lab. Now, this is the Giga Wine School. So what we did there is that it's a simple, uh, it's, it's a very uh, interesting experiment. Simple way to do that is that we're gonna send in a, a pulse. This pulse is a few cycle of the terahertz pulse. This terahertz centered about one uh, 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 terahertz, which have energy about five me. Now, if I have a gap more than five me, I cannot make any electrons excitations going from the valence band to the to the uh, to the to the conducting band, right? The only way you can do that is close the gap. Then the deactivation will possible. So uh, let's focus on the middle figure here. So you will find here is that if I send the first this uh, few cycles of uh, a pulse there. Now this shows by the gray uh, lines here. This is the, is the pulse coming from this uh, um, terahertz laser there. Now first thing happen is that you excited the phonons and this uh, uh, black line shows the phonon emissions. And this is the bounce back about a few cycles and dies out. Now what happened is this uh, cycles here. This is activate the lowest energies, the uh, lowest uh, uh, phonon mode that we call A1G mode. This A1G mode, it bounces atoms and cause distortions. These distortions will allow us to make the material from strong TI phase passing through the Dirac semi-metals and go to T uh, weak TI. So in the middle of that is the Dirac semi-metal. So it's the same way as changes that is constant. So now I have the, in the middle state, which is Dirac semi-metals, and this will allow my carriers, charge carriers coming up. And this is measured by the emissions you will have a huge emissions coming from, the, uh, from this uh, uh, curl, uh, uh, the charge of that. And this lasts more than hundreds of nanoseconds. This is exciting, right? Now, you, normally you were excited carriers, it would die very quick. We're talking about hundreds of nanoseconds, uh, uh, sub uh, a picosecond. These carriers last hundred picoseconds. Why is that? Because of protective polarities. So this shows that you can affect the transform the systems between the topology insulators and direct, with the direct semi-metal and simply by using a laser pulsar. Now, next one, uh, um, the last example I want to show is, is really cool. And um, let's start from, the, from the, to explain that, let's go to this very basic thing. The idea is that you have the topological crystal, right? As a quantum penetrator, right? And you know that you break the uh, um, um, power reversal symmetry by simply, um, apply external magnetic field. Now that's, uh, we're talking about Tesla uh, range of magnetic field, but this is not very practical to build a quantum computers, right? Now your hope is that I'm get rid of this magnetic field. And uh, without a static magnetic field and the crystals are there, and it's very difficult to transform it into a wire system. Now, the only way to do that is to break the inversion symmetry, but the crystals are already made. How are you gonna do that? Now, this is a, a genius come up with that. You can send in an infrared a, 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 a pulse phonons. That phonon do the work. These phonons can do different things. There are 36 different modes there. Here I show you one of the modes is B1U mode. The B1U mode, it causes the twist actions. The twist the crystals actually break the inversion symmetry by twisting them. So this B1U modes and causing the change of the band structure leading to this wire nose formation shows here. And this is actually indeed a see that. This is the experiment. And this is a very exciting experiment. We see that. This is a light induced a giant displacement photon current. And this is a quantum penetrator. The idea is that I first send in a pulse, an IR pulse, in which will create this B1U mode. We, this causes the twisting of the lattice and break the inversion symmetry. Once break the inversion symmetry, my system is in the wire mode. Now I have two pairs, right? Now, if I send in the, in the, in the, the terahertz pulse over there, and I can I have the coronal normally, basically. I have a kind of coupling now. I can separate left hand to right hand. So what is the evidence of that? The simple evidence to measure the terahertz emission. Now, if this terahertz emissions is a circular polarized dependence, boom, that is chiral current, right? Otherwise it's not. So you can see that at higher temperatures, which is above this transition, you see there is pretty much no dependence of that. But in a low temperature 5K, you see this very large emission of that, and it swings according to polarization angles, uh, polarizations. And that's the evidence to show that 
my photo current is Carl. Okay. And there is effective coupling between the carotids of the fermions and the circular polarization. And this shows it. Now, one more interesting thing, which I found exciting here is that this scattering times, the scattering rate drops close to zero. Now, and it sets up at a very high temperature. This is the temperature where we first see the very curvature induced anomaly. This is measured the Brook Evans. We measure an almost whole effect then found this uh, temperature where the very coverage attacks become effective to induce this anomalous whole effect. And this is at the same place where you see this uh, uh, scattering rate drops precipitous. So once the system is going to be the car over there and the protection of the will help to drive the uh, scattering rates towards zero. So that means this current basically is dissipationless, right? And this is exactly what we need for building the car qubit. So I think this experiment is, is exciting because it really breaks the ground for, the, for, for, for our uh, drive to, to get this car cubic. And this is uh, uh, produce a very large photo current and it is caro and also dissipationless. And this, if you calculate about the scale in terms of this mean-free uh, 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 um, pass over there, this ballistic transport there, we're talking about a, a tens of the microns. This is why our uh, cubic is in the order of the a, a micron range there. So with that scale, this should be dissipationless. Okay. So I think I'm uh, um, coming to the end of my lecture over there. So um, I hope in this lectures I give you some of the um, uh, ideas about this uh, uh, car materials. And I start with the car artists. And what we're talking about is left-handed or right-handed. They're coming from the high energy physics. Now they're, uh, I, I show you that in condensed matters, we can actually do a lot of the, uh, 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 to study this with the this quantum field series in condensed matter experiment. That example here is a kind of car anomaly. Uh, and we discovered this car magnetic effect in the um, um, Dirac sand metals there. And also I uh, tell you that um, if you have, you have a ways to uh, effect the couple, this carority of the fermions with the circular polarizations, you can build a car qubit, right? So also this car uh, enable the, um, a transduction is possible so that this carotids will be acting as the encoder and decoder in the message as a quantum bus between the devices over there. Now, the last things I didn't say uh, about it, but the fact that I, I, I point out is this uh, car current, a photo current is, uh, can be um, a dissipationless. Now, effectively, you can build this car uh, photovoltaic, right? Think about that. Now, if you have, uh, nowadays you have the photos, uh, solar cells to convert the um, solar energies to electricity, right? Using the uh, PN junctions inside semiconductor junction, and the uh, limited fact of there is electron a whole recombination process of that. Now here is not is a single carrier, there. and if we can make this uh, a photovoltaic based on this uh, uh, car anomaly, and and you could have a quantum uh, uh, cells which uh, uh, be uh, be able to operate in as um, as an energy uh, conversion devices. So. Um, this is pretty much what I want to say. So um, here comes to the acknowledgement. So um, the work at the Brookhaven uh, was supported by the US Department of Energy Office of Basic Energy Science. And uh, I list all of my collaborators here and the most important ones, of course, are my dear friend, Dr. Meiji Harzev, and uh, um, is very instrumental in this, uh, in his drives on this um, car magnet effect and also the development of this concept of the um, uh, car cubic. And the, um, the band structure calculation using uh, um, first principle and effect of Hamiltonians uh, was done at the Brookhaven uh, um, with Mirage as a postdoc and, and a group leader, uh, Alex Tvalik, the theory group, and um, uh, we go there at the Brookhaven. So experimental side, uh, I have two wonderful students and a, a former student, uh, Chen, now is working on Silicon Valley company, and the current student, Pedro um, Lozano, and uh, is, uh, is working on um, um, currently on many areas of the related experiments. So again, that is the crystal grower and it is a fabulous one provided this exciting uh, samples to work with. And Tony works on the um, RPES for to get in these uh, band structures. And optical studies, I have two uh, wonderful collaborators, Ling Quan Liu, Professor Liu is, uh, is, is in our university and uh, Jiga ones from Ames Lab in our state university. So um, there are a lot of opportunities in quantum materials and um, if you feel like to uh, work with us, let me know. I'm gonna send you this uh, I list of my emails and this is the website for that. 
And with that, um, thank you for your uh, for attention. Thank you very much for inspiring talk. Indeed, a lot of different things you can do with chiral materials. And I just wanted to ask you, uh, could you comment on the, uh, let's say all the experiments you've done in optics, for example, in excitations, you have many photons exciting your chiral currents, but if you want to, to go down to the single excitation level, uh, how feasible is this? That's a very good question. We haven't really go down that one. We are looking at the collective behavior now at this moment. So we lack a lot of emission over there. At the single level over there, I would say in principle, that should be work, right? But um, how are you gonna do the circular polarizing single ones to couple that one? That's a challenging experiment. You know, I, uh, um, well, um, as I say that um, the chiral cubic and the super cubic, it's, we deal with the millions of electrons. So uh, we are not really, um, working mm -hmm. area where you have single spins and uh, uh, trapped irons for doing the uh, base state there. So we deal with a lot of them. So in that sense, um, we're not worried at this moment for the, for the uh, uh, interaction with a single photon yet. All right, thank you. So we have one question in the chat uh, mm -hmm. from Jake. Uh, if you want, you can unmute un un uh, yourself or do you want me to read it? Okay, uh, I will read it. Thank you for this ins insightful talk. Uh, please, can you come back on the implementation of the entanglement of qubits through near field terahertz frequency electromagnetic fields? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, so what is the question? Do, do you want to un unmute yourself? Or do you want to... I just simply want to work, uh, look at this slide again. <laughs> so, do we have a question there? Um, okay. Entangle. Yes, so entanglement. So maybe the question is that how do you, you have a different qubits? How do you, um, you mentioned in your talk that through interaction, you yeah. can. Yeah. Well, so this is a much more complicated uh, uh, um, questions to do uh, to answer there. Now entanglement, basically you have the two cars. Uh, look, you change the. Uh, um, is it by? Is it use the uh, circular uh, by a spacing between them. Excuse me. No, no, no. I, I mean, you can excite them individually, but yeah. how do you make sure they interact with each other? Well, interact with each other. Because this one, this uh, terahertz uh, um, resonator itself can be a detective mechanism too, and can be as a storage too. So they produce that. This can be, of course, I didn't show any resonator here. Now these resonators, and they're supposed to put on top of that, is basically you can have emission too. So emission ones will carry the signature of the chirarities too, uh, for a polarization too. And that will be a transfer. This uh, a, a message will be passed on to the next ones if absorbed. Ah, I see, so it's near field coupling. Yes, it's yes, near field coupling. We'll carry this information based on the circular polarization, the momentum transfer. Mm -hmm. Very good, any more questions, discussions? So people take time to digest the talk. Maybe you can allude a little bit on transduction. You said that you can use chiral materials to transduce information from superconducting qubits uh, because you cover large frequency range. Right. So could you elaborate? Because mm -hmm. the energy is conserved. So if you, so, so how do you, do you mean you have a frequency conversion? No. Or? I can tell you this one. This is really at 30,000 miles of view, okay? It's, really, it's, it's not really uh, uh, down to the device levels there, okay? So we're talking about is just electromagnetic wave coupling, not at the device level. Mm -hmm. so, um, in principle, that we're talking about this transduction is really the coupling of this uh, chiral fermions with the circular polarization of electromagnetic wave, okay? Mm -hmm. Not at the device level, no. That lost miles, somebody else will have to figure out how to do that. At this moment, that we haven't really got into that. Okay, I see. So superconducting qubit 
excite chiral current and you electrically detect it. Something like this. Yeah, if, if, now think about how you're going to transmit the, uh, the information from superconductors, uh, 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 quantum computers to the network, right? And mm -hmm. need some kind of bus to do that too. Right? Mm -hmm. So that first stage were transferred to the electromagnetic wave, basically, right? And that part is that we're not doing it at this moment. Okay, mm -hmm. that's have to do. Now that frequency at the gigahertz of frequencies, the quantum information coded there, mm -hmm. we picked up the same way as everybody else. In, in, uh, we use the karate as our carry. That's what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Mm. Okay, did I answer your question? <laughs> yes, we can okay. talk more about this. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, the device lab was there, that's much more complicated. Right, we're, we're not really going to that, yeah. Okay, any more questions from the audience? Um, hi, may, may I ask a question, Kwang? Great, great talk, thank you very much. So uh, I, uh, how, how you read out the state of these qubits, uh, of chiral qubits? So if you need to determine, you know, the state, so what, you know, what, what will be the process? Okay, now the, the states of that one, so we're talking about the, uh, basically is the circular polarization, right? The, 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 the current inside. Now, this is the current. This is basically, if you have a current inside the rings, you have electromagnetic field, right? Basically, the electromagnetic field in a short ways, uh, in, 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 a, in, in a very short time scale, there is a, a, is a electromagnetic wave. And this electromagnetic wave is picked up by this uh, uh, um, uh, uh, coupled to the, to, the, to the one we're talking about, this um, uh, uh, circular polarization. Basically, that, that's how we do it. Okay. Is it a destructive measurement or non-destructive? Uh, this should be non-destructive because the, the couple in there is, is really uh, emissions from this uh, uh, short current, right? So, mm -hmm. so this, this is the same way as, as the light uh, matter interaction up there. Okay, thank you. May I ask a question? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, about the electron phonon coupling. Yeah. You, from, your, uh, from calculations of your colleagues, uh, and from the experimental measurements, it looks like there is a strong electron phonon coupling. Uh, can you relate it to the mo electrical mobility which you measure in those devices? Oh, yeah. This uh, material has a very, very super high uh, mobilities. We're talking mm -hmm. about 10 to the fifth. And this is even better than the graphene. That's why the, um, uh, um, uh, the, 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 the material is so exciting is that it's, it's really in the ballistic transport regime of that. Have such a mean, low mean field pass you can have non dissipations uh, provided the car is not flipped. And this uh, as time, uh, length scale we're talking about is in about a tenth of micron. But wait a second, this must be at low temperatures, at room temperature. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> well, now, but this phenomenon we observed mm -hmm. starts about 150K or 190K. Uh, okay. Now, this is, I, I would assume it's a material about that uh, dependent. Some mm -hmm. people tend to see this car magnet at the room temperature too. Now, you, you point out very correctly that the electron uh, phonon coupling is going to be a covers to be uh, flipping the car artists there. And so, so does the many other things over there. Now, the idea is that now you have this band. Now, look at the band over there. And the zirconium panel is nice. We have a, a linear band dispersions of, uh, 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 over a large energy region. So some of the materials have short. Then you have the bands nonlinear, start to curve back, and that will produce the uh, scattering, that car artist flipping, right? So mm. for each of that, this is all, what we're doing is that development. And also I'm setting up a lab at the Stony Brook right now to make a better car of materials so that we can design the material as a single band over large regions, no side bands, so that mm. you have a very limited source to flip the car, car artists. Then you can have a room temperature in principle, right? Okay, I see. So, so do I understand correctly that phonon mechanism is the main limiting factor? Yeah. Is not necessarily mainly in the factors, but the band dispersion itself could be too. Because mm -hmm. you see that the band is someplace over high energy levels, you will have to bend, right? Connect together. So mm -hmm. you think about that, you're taking out the low energy excitation with that smooth cut over there, right? And mm -hmm. any nonlinearity in that cut over there would be the chiral flipping source too, right? So the band itself is important. Of course, the electron phonon coupling is also a, a reason to the, uh, the chiral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the band is density of states. All right. Uh, any so if there are students, please uh, ask questions. It's, uh, indeed, um, many things you can learn from this talk.
Well, I don't see questions in the chat. Uh, people don't raise their hands. So, so maybe the last question I ask. So you showed a bunch of chiral materials. Yeah. And since you worked with many of them, which one would you would you rate as most promising? Um, I, I, I would be very biased, right? I like it's a corner penetrator. <laughs> you got a the, the reason I like that one. You see that the, the linear dispersion over very large energy regions. And the second thing is that you can have the topological insulators face there, wire semi-metal face, direct semi-metal. It's it's very the tunability. The materials has small amount of strains. You can tune in a different uh, topologic phases there. Mm -hmm. So this is a really wonderful playground that we can do. Now, if we're going to do monolayer there, monolayer there, effectively it's become topologic insulator, a quantum spin hole system. Mm -hmm. Then we can use this monolayers as a way to build our cubic too. In you know, one, mm -hmm. one dimension, use the chiral, uh, chiral edge state over there. So, you know, we're not really limited by the 3D version of that. It could work in a, in a, in a, in a, in a in, in, in a 2D version of that, use the edge state for doing that. So this is really an exciting playground that we can, we can work on. Of course, now, you have, the one I didn't show you is that if you have side bands, which is parabolic dispersed in, in, in mm -hmm. a different uh, brilliant zone, at the corner of the brilliant zone, that could be problematic. So the other thing is that what we're doing is that to try to make the magnetic so that we can use the internal magnetic moment to control mm -hmm. the priority. Rather, uh, uh, using the external and magnetic field there. So there's a lot of this, uh, research direction you want to go to. Mm -hmm. But at this moment, um, that's a coding panel, but seems to be very good. And um, other system could do then people like the uh, uh, sodium uh, bismuth, uh, sodium bismuth, but that's air sensitive, right? But mm -hmm. the is kind of more forgiving. And you can have other system too, but at this moment, I, I like this according to, and the sister combines are going to Huffman Penetera or, also works, but Huffman is a little bit more expensive, right? So this quantum Penetera is kind of a, you know, affordable thing. <laughs> I see that Vladimir Karepin has a question. So Vladimir, do you want to unmute yourself? Uh, Vladimir? Actually, I clapped. This is not a question, you know. This is like clapping. It's different oh, sign. Thank you. It's not raised hand. It's just clapping. You know, those okay. signs are different. This is in the reactions. Okay. okay. We, we took your reaction. Very good. Okay. All right. So maybe we, if there is no more questions, let's um, unmute ourselves and uh, give a plot to Chang Li. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Yes, and uh, in the afternoon at uh, 1 p.m., uh, we will have uh, a very interesting uh, panel on uh, quantum communications. Uh, so it will be uh, really fun to uh, participate in it. And so I certainly uh, invite all of you to this uh, panel. So uh, let me thank uh, uh, both Professor Lee and Professor Peribanas for this wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Thank you.